Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. A deadly terror attack plagues the ancient city of Jerusalem early on Sunday morning, claiming the life of one civilian and wounding four others. The United Kingdom designates the Islamist Hamas as a terror organization, drawing praise from Jerusalem and condemnations from the Gaza Strip. The United States reportedly warns Israel over its alleged attacks against Iranian nuclear installations, labeling it as counterproductive. A deadly terror attack plagued the ancient part of Jerusalem early yesterday morning, when an Islamist Arab resident of East Jerusalem opened fire toward a number of Israeli civilians walking toward the western wall of the Temple Mount. Regrettably, the abhorrent terrorist, 42-year-old Fadi Abu Shaidem, managed to murder one civilian, a 26-year-old guide who originally immigrated from South Africa, alongside two civilians and two police officers who sustained wounds in separate degrees of severity and were taken to hospital for treatment. <laughs> It is important to know that according to preliminary information from a police investigation into the incident, the terrorist, known to police for his affiliation to the internationally recognized terror group Hamas, carefully planned the heinous shooting attack, including by helping his wife flee the country before committing the abhorrent act of terror. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, in his opening remarks at the weekly cabinet meeting, relayed Jerusalem's condolences to the family of the victim and asked to join in prayer for those wounded. בשם שרי הממשלה אני מבקש להשתתף בצער המשפחה ומבקש להצטרף לתפילה לרפואת הפצועים. Bennett further commended the prompt response by the Israeli officers who engaged the terrorist in a vigorous gun battle that brought about a relatively early end to the deadly incident. הייתה שם פעולה מהירה מאוד של כוחותינו, שתי השוטרות שהיו במקום והשוטרים שהיו במקום והם נטרלו במהירות רבה את המחבל. עם זאת זה הפיגוע השני שמתרחש בזמן האחרון בירושלים. הוריתי לכוחות הביטחון להיערך בהתאם ולגלות דריכות גם מחשש לפיגועי השראה. אנחנו צריכים להגביר את הדריכות ולמנוע פיגועים המשכיים. The Israeli Premier also seized the opportunity to commend the government of the United Kingdom for its decision to designate the political wing of the Islamist Hamas organization, an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, a terrorist organization. Boris Johnson עד כה רק הזרוע הצבאית הייתה מוגדרת כך. מעתה, גם אנשי הזרוע המדינית יהיו חשופים לאותן סנקציות בדיוק. זה משקף הבנה מבורכת, שאני מקווה שתחלחל לכל אירופה, על איך עובד ארגון טרור. אין רקטות ואין טרור בלי מעטפת מדינית, בלי גיוס כספים, בלי מכונת הסתה. London's decision to ban the Islamist Hamas organization was announced on Friday, November 19th, when British Interior Minister Priti Patel laid an order in Parliament to amend Schedule 2 of the Terrorism Act 2000 to prescribe Hamas in its entirety, including its political wing. Hamas has significant terrorist capability, including access to extensive and sophisticated weaponry, as well as terrorist training facilities, 
and it has long been involved in significant terrorist violence. But the current listing of Hamas creates an artificial distinction between various parts of that organization. It is right that that listing is updated to reflect this. Minister Patel went on to warn that anyone who supports or invites support from a proscribed organization, including the Islamist Hamas, is breaking the law. This is an important step, especially for the Jewish community. Hamas is fundamentally and rapidly anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitism is an enduring evil which I will never tolerate. Jewish people routinely feel unsafe at school, in the streets, when they worship, in their homes and online. This step will strengthen the case against anyone who waves a Hamas flag in the United Kingdom, an act that is bound to make Jewish people and the community feel unsafe. Anyone who supports or invites support for a prescribed organization is breaking the law. That now includes Hamas in whatever form it takes. The British government's decision, as mentioned by Prime Minister Bennett, was warmly welcomed in Jerusalem. Nevertheless, too many Western countries lag behind in accepting that the political branch of an organization that engages in terror activities cannot be dealt with differently from its militant arm. Hamas is a terror. It's not a terror terror. It's a terror terror of people who are trying to kill Jews because they are Jews. I'm happy that the British government has known this. I'm calling to the European countries to come in contrast to the deep appreciation voiced in Israel, the Islamist Hamas organization, which blatantly praised its operative for the murder of Jewish civilians in yesterday's terror attack, naturally condemned the United Kingdom for designating it for what it is. Meanwhile, Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog embarked on a two-day visit to Britain early this morning, starting his marathon of subsequent meetings with the United Kingdom's Crown Prince, Prince Charles of Wales, followed by an all-party Britain-Israel parliamentary group at the Palace of Westminster and a meeting with British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss. And while tomorrow the Israeli head of state is scheduled to meet with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, among other senior UK officials, President Herzog highlighted in his pre-travel remarks that he aims to convey to London Jerusalem's unwavering position vis-à-vis -vis the Islamic Republic of Iran. אני אבהיר להם שישראל לא תוכל לאפשר לאיראן יכולת גרעינית והיא מצפה מבעלות בריתה להיות תקיפים ונוקשים כלפי האיראנים גם בדיאלוג שהם מקיימים עמם. ישראל מבהירה עמדה זו לכל ידידותיה וכמובן מבהירה שהיא שומרת לעצמה את כל היכולות שלה כדי להגן על עצמה. It is important to know that Jerusalem's message to its allies and partners worldwide comes at a time when its most powerful ally had reportedly warned the Israeli defense establishment that it views ongoing attacks on Iranian nuclear installations as counterproductive. While the report, which was published first on the New York Times, cited U.S. officials as cautioning their Israeli counterparts of continuing such efforts, Jerusalem officials reportedly dismissed the American warning, asserting that they have no intention of letting up. Meanwhile, in the Kingdom of Bahrain, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, who arrived in Manama over the weekend as a first stop of a regional tour, seized the opportunity to reiterate Washington's unwavering support for its regional partners and allies, highlighting that the United States maintains interests in the region and it intends to protect those interests. I think uh, they know that, you know, over the last many, many years. Uh, we have been in this region. We have been, uh, uh, we have provided meaningful capability. Uh, there, there's been speculation uh, over a number of years that we're going to leave the region altogether. That hasn't happened. Uh, I mean, you're, we have a fleet that's, uh, that's headquartered here uh, in Bahrain. Uh, we have, a, you know, tens of thousands of, uh, of troops in the region. Uh, and so, Sometimes we just kind of need to remind ourselves that there is significant capability here and we can surge more capability in uh, when needed. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think we're able to, uh, to answer questions and reassure uh, our, our allies and partners 
but I think they know that we're going to be we're, we're going to remain committed to this region. We have interest here. We're going to protect those interests. Secretary Austin further highlights the importance of the 5th Fleet, which is headquartered in Bahrain, asserting that it contributes directly to ensuring that the strategic waterways, where over a third of global oil transits on a daily basis, remains open to commercial traffic. It is important to know that on the same day that Secretary Austin made his remarks, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps of Iran have seized a foreign tanker in the Gulf. An Iranian regime-run media outlet quoted an RGC naval officer as claiming that a foreign ship carrying smuggled diesel was seized, while further claiming that after inspection more than 150,000 liters of smuggled diesel were discovered and that the ship's 11 crew members were detained for interrogation. No additional details were given regarding the reported incident. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Lebanon once again in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shavuot Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.